Meet the Lone Wanderer. My latest Fallout 4 build, based off of the Wanderer trailer released over a year ago, but with a few of my own twists added on. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy the video, and make sure to give it a share too. Without any more delay, let's get on to the build. The Lone Wanderer has Strength 3, Perception 4, Endurance 3, Charisma 3, Intelligence 5, Agility 4, and Luck 7. We don't need particularly high strength for this character, but a strength of 3 is very handy as it gives you immediate access to the armor perk. A perception of 4 helps with VATS accuracy, making us a reasonable shot and also gets us a couple of great perks. Endurance is relatively low at 3. This character gains a lot of his survivability from Charisma instead of Endurance, but having a few points in this is still very helpful. If you want to carry this build on further than this video will cover, then I would recommend putting some perk points into this at higher levels. Charisma is at 3 for us to get the Lone Wanderer perk. It's the namesake of the build, and one of the most powerful perks in the game. An intelligence of 5 makes us level at a fair rate, and will help us with weapon modding and armour modding once we get the bobblehead. Agility is only at 4 for this character. I did consider raising it in order to get the ninja perk, but I found that this changed the character too much. Instead, having 4 points in this stat will give a decent number of action points to use at a regular rate. Finally, having luck at 7 allows for this character to use critical hits with brutal effectiveness. I found that having 6 or 7 luck lets you play as a critical hit character without having to rely purely on critical hits to win fights. The essential perks for this character are Rifleman, Lone Wanderer, and Attack Dog. Rifles are the main weapon choice for this build. They offer a good balance of range, accuracy, and damage, and the Rifleman perks will increase damage and add armor piercing to your shots. Lone Wanderer is a great perk, which increases the damage you deal, decreases the damage you take, and boosts your carry capacity. Attack Dog is quite a handy perk, if not exceptional. It makes dog meat a fair bit more powerful, but the key to using this perk effectively is to fight the same enemy as dog meat at the same time. When he is attacking an enemy, they won't be focusing on you, and you will get a better chance to hit them in vats. In addition, the final rank of this perk reduces the damage you take by 10%, meaning you have a total of a flat 40% damage reduction, which is just freaking amazing. The recommended perks for this build are Gun Nut, Science, Better Criticals, Action Boy, and Demolition Expert. Gun Nut and Science are going to give you a ton of choice in how to mod out your weapons, and the Science perk can also help with armor modding too. The Better Criticals perk means that whenever you use a critical shot, you deal some bonus damage, actually making your criticals powerful enough to deal with tougher enemies. Action Boy is just a really handy perk to have. It will make VATs more viable in prolonged combat, keep you moving faster around the map, and generally just ensure you aren't hiding behind cover for ages waiting for your action points to refresh. The Demolition Expert perk is very powerful and fun to use. The throwing arc in particular makes throwables easy for everyone to use and reduces the chance of missing with your grenades. There are three role-playing perks for this build, Gunslinger, Armorer, and Critical Banker. The Gunslinger perk is here purely because I felt that the 10mm pistol was an iconic weapon for a Lone Wanderer or any Vault Dweller to use, so I wanted that option open to me whilst playing. Obviously rifles will be your main damage dealers, but it's nice to be able to mix it up a little. The Armourer perk is great for improving your armour. It probably won't be needed, but it does improve the defence of a character significantly. Finally, Critical Banker is a great perk but as this character isn't specifically that focused, I felt that it wasn't that useful for the build most of the time. It still is nice to have though, and having a bunch of stored criticals is great for dealing with powerful enemies, especially when tied in with the better criticals perk. The Lone Wanderer served as a faithful soldier in the US Army for many years. He always performed any task he was given to the best of his abilities, and this led to him being selected by his superiors for the West Tech drug trials. He was injected with a serum, and just like all the others, woke up sometime later. He was in the same room and didn't really feel any different. The West Tech staff ran some tests on him, 
but it seemed they couldn't find any change, so they assumed the serum had no effect on him, and he was returned to active duty immediately. He returned to his squad, and everything went back to normal for a while. A few months later though, his squad was out on a recon mission, and had camped out in the field. One morning, when the squad awoke, they were greeted with the sight of one of their members butchered. His body was horrifically contorted, and all of his bones must have been broken several times over. The sentries hadn't seen anyone sneak in, and they had no idea why someone would do this. If it had been an enemy soldier that had managed to sneak in, why not quietly kill all of them in their sleep? With their questions unanswered, they were forced to carry on their mission, and it wasn't until they returned to their own base that they were able to bury their dead squad mate. However, a couple of nights later, the same thing happened again. Another soldier brutally killed in the night, but this time at the friendly base. Once again, nobody had seen or heard anything, and everyone was clueless as to what had gone on. An investigation was started to try and find the culprit, as the officers began to suspect that a member of the squad might have been responsible. The next night though, the officer who was leading the investigation was found with his throat ripped out, and suddenly everyone felt that there was a saboteur in their midst. Soldiers started turning on one another, and every night patrols were doubled. Despite this, the murders carry on until one night when the lone wanderer wakes up to an awful sight. Lying in front of him is a disfigured body, freshly killed and reeking of death. He looks down at his hands. They're covered in blood, and he's holding a knife. Suddenly realising that all of the murders have been performed by him somehow, he flees the scene. Washing the blood off of him in a bathroom, he begins to hear a voice in the back of his head. The voice is telling him that the soldier deserved it, that he had enjoyed killing all those people, and he should do it again. Fighting with the voice throughout the rest of the night, he is barely able to resist it, but as the day dawns, it begins to quiet, and he knows he has to leave the army at once. He heads away from the base once his latest victim is discovered, using the chaos to slip away with ease. He then spends the next several years in hiding, staying away from any inhabited areas, and fighting with the voice day and night. In time though, he is able to regain control of himself, and he eventually feels that it is safe to spend some time in civilization once more. Starting slowly, he begins by just spending the odd night in hotels, but eventually he starts to live a more normal life. As time goes on, he is able to live like everyone else, even having a wife and son, and being happy for a while. After he wakes up from cryosleep though, the trauma of living through the apocalypse and losing his family reawakens the voice and it comes back stronger than ever before, being able to take control of him at any point, with the Wanderer being almost powerless to resist. When playing this character, I suggest joining all of the factions, but ultimately siding with whichever one you personally want to. For me it would be the Brotherhood of Steel with a bit of support from the Minutemen, but the Railroad and Institute can also be fun endings to go for. Despite being named the Lone Wanderer, this build does have a companion. This character will travel the waste with his faithful hound, Dogmeat. Travelling with Dogmeat still gives you the benefits of Lone Wanderer, whilst also giving you the benefit of having a companion with you. Plus, you've got the attack dog perk, so you're going to want to have dog meat. The weapons for this build include a 10mm pistol, if you're looking for a legendary then grab the Wastelander's friend, a laser musket, the Overseer's Guardian, and Righteous Authority. The last two in particular are what I consider to be the main weapons for this character. The Overseer's Guardian works great as a fast shooting rifle for most encounters, and Righteous Authority helps with the critical side of his character, making it your main VATS weapon. The armour for this build will be a Vault Jumpsuit with the Protector's Arm Guards, Wastelander's Chest Piece, and Leather Legs. This is basically just all leather gear, but you may not find any good legendary drops of leather armour, so these pieces are good to grab. Make sure you don't go with sturdy or heavy pieces as this ruins the aesthetic of the build. For the Vault Jumpsuit, you may wish to go for either the Vault 111 or the Legend of Vault 88. The Legend of Vault 88 is the more powerful version, and has the Ghoul Slayer's legendary effect. But the Vault 111 suit is better for roleplaying, as it ties into the character more, and helps to replicate the aesthetic from the Wanderer trailer. You may have noticed that all of the footage in this build is taken from roughly the same camera angle, to get the real feel of this build, 
you'll want to play in third person with your weapon always drawn to get the over the shoulder look, which ties into how all of the shots in the Wanderer trailer are filmed. For role playing, you will want to purposefully switch up the way you play at random intervals. Play as the nice and helpful guy that the game pushes you towards for the most part, but every once in a while just turn into a complete jerk and start being sarcastic or specifically trying to cause fights. This helps to represent that the Wanderer is in fact two different people, and although it isn't perfect, it's as good as we can get to replicating that in the game. When you switch can be completely up to you, or you can go for my suggested method and set a timer to go off every 10 or 20 minutes, and whenever it goes off, you switch between being the good guy or the bad one. Lastly, for general gameplay and combat, you're pretty versatile. You're a fast shooting rifleman who is proficient with critical shots, which makes most fights fairly straightforward. If you want to, you can stand in the open and use tons of stim packs, or you can go for a cover based system where you focus on taking the least amount of damage as possible by fighting smart. I hope that all of you enjoyed this build, and don't forget to hit the like button if you did. If you aren't already, subscribe to the channel, and also leave a comment below with your thoughts or feelings on this character. If you're looking for some more stuff to watch right now, then click on one of the links on screen for more of my great content.